Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Allison Buckland, and thanks for joining in tonight. I'm so excited for um, what we're going to talk about. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background of how this meeting and event came to fruition, um, I am an independent consultant with Arbonne International, which um, has really brought this topic into my life, being a part of that amazing organization. And I was first introduced to this topic and the subject of self-talk when I ran across um, uh, this wonderful woman who is presenting for us today um, through Facebook and through Arbonne. And I started taking a look at some of the posts that she was putting out on Facebook and really started to, 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 to take a, a look at um, the interest in self-talk. And Bethany and I actually connected earlier this year um, for um, you know, a one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, she started talking to me about positive self-talk and the idea of what you think about, you bring about. I've started getting involved into it, and recently, Bethany and I reconnected, and she um, so amazingly, graciously offered to uh, do this uh, self-talk training for me and you guys and everybody who's on here. So I'm really excited to hear what Miss Bethany has to say and uh, what knowledge she is going to share with all of us um, and her experience. So, hey, Bethany, welcome and thank you. Hi, yes, I'm excited. All right, well, I will jump. I'll just jump right in, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm excited to share with you guys tonight. This is my absolute favorite thing to talk about. I love, love, love this topic. Um, and just to kind of give you my story in a nutshell, for those of you who don't know who I am, <laughs> I am an independent consultant and I'm a regional vice president with Arbon. I have actually been with the company for almost 12 years now. Um, my introduction was with baby products when my oldest was a baby. That, that was a gift from a friend. I didn't know what Arbon was. I had no idea. I didn't use skincare. I, yeah, definitely not the candidate that you would, the, your typical candidate. But um, shortly after I got the baby products, I got a sample of the skincare line, the RE9 line, and I thought, well, free sample, I'll try it. <laughs> but you have to understand, I was the girl that used a bar of soap and a jar of Vaseline. I know, terrible. I'm alive. But um, I just, I didn't know any better. I had no education on that. I didn't really have any skin issues. So I thought, oh, this is fine. But as you know, if you use Arbonne, that, you know, within three days, I'm like, oh my gosh, my skin feels amazing. I want this. And being the bargain shopper that I am, I asked what the best deal was. And at that time, it was really being becoming a consultant. There was no preferred client option. So I signed up as a consultant. And then for eight years, I proceeded to consult for my family. <laughs> and so, um, you know, Jim Rohn says that people make a change for either desperation or inspiration. And honestly, ours was out of desperation. Um, on the outside, our life looked great. Uh, I was a stay-at-home mom. I'd had a second baby. Um, I didn't need to work. We had money in the bank. All of our bills were paid. My husband worked for himself from home and made really great money. Um, but he was miserable, honestly. Um, you know, you, you know, you can see it in somebody like every time he would sit down at his computer, like life would drain from his eyes. And I'm like, gosh, we cannot live like this. So, um, I did a lot of thinking, a lot of praying. And I was like, well, I don't really know another option other than Arbon. I mean, I've seen enough people do this that I know this could work for me. And I don't know what else would give us the freedom that we want really. And so I jumped in with my biggest fear being I didn't want to be the, I don't know, the scary Arbonne lady that, you know, pushy, salesy, that kind of person. I just, I value relationships. I value people over product. And so that was my number one fear, honestly. Um, I didn't want to lose friendships over Arbonne. But honestly, I haven't lost any friendships yet. I've gained a lot of really great ones. <laughs> so it's all worked out great. Um, but my story as far as self-talk goes, uh, I want to talk to you guys tonight about self-talk and neuroplasticity. Brain science is absolutely fascinating to me. I love it. My first introduction to a man named 
Dr. Shad Helmstetter came through Arbonne. Uh, my upline brought him to do a training when we lived in Tulsa 11, 11 years ago. It was a long time ago. And I was absolutely fascinated. I was floored. I was fascinated. Um, we bought some of his material at that time. But, you know, I don't know. You change, you grow. And at that time in life, I wasn't consistent with it. Um, but I followed his work for a long time. And so when he came back three years ago, my upline brought him back and had another training. And I sat in the front row <laughs> and I cried my eyeballs out. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but I was at a different place in life. I was like, okay, I need this now. I can see it. I can recognize that I need it and I know what I need to do with it. And so it really has made a huge impact in not only my business, but also uh, my family, my marriage, my parenting, my relationships. Um, it, it's huge. I mean, it really touches every area of your life. So, um, so that's why I love sharing it because whether somebody sticks with Arbon or not, you know, that's kind of out of my hands, but giving them a tool that they can use in their everyday life and every part of their life that affects every relationship and every belief and everything that they do, that's life changing. Um, I mean, it really does change your life. So, so I want to share with you guys what I've learned from Dr. Shad. This year I went and um, I trained under him for three and a half days in January. He he's been doing just a couple, I think that, that was his fourth uh, session over the last year and a half. He brought in, I think there was 33 of us in that session, and he brought in a, you know 33 people. He's been training just a few people to kind of bring forth the message that he's spent his entire life uh, delivering, but he's getting older now and not really traveling. So he wants that message to keep going. So I studied under him in January. And so I'm going to share with you guys what I learned because it's amazing. So I want to um, start tonight. I have notes, so I stay on track here. So <laughs> I can tend to get a little excited and off track. So I don't want to keep you all night long. I want to respect your time, but, but, um, but yeah, I, I got to know Dr. Shad on a personal level back in January. And then he also came to my car presentation last year. That was kind of miraculous in itself. He really doesn't do that anymore. And he made sure he told me that. And I was very persistent, very persistent in asking. But, um, but yeah, he's an amazing man. And his life work has been to really bring this message to people. So I really hope and pray tonight that you can hear it with an open heart and open mind and that um, it really will sink down and, you know, dig into some of those places that maybe you need to deal with. I don't know. And give you some tools to help you walk that out. So, okay. So um, I want to talk tonight to you guys. There's a, the question, you know, why are some people successful and others aren't? Okay. That's the question that I think a lot of us at, at some point, especially if you're an Arbon, at some point in your Arbon business, you ask, you know, why are some people successful and other people aren't? What is the deal with that? So in order to explain that to you guys, I kind of want to walk through this training. All right. So from the moment you were born, every message that you received was recorded in your brain. Okay. So everything that you say, everything that you hear, everything you see, everything you do, Everything you experience and even every thought that you think is recorded in your brain. And every message that you receive repeatedly gets wired in, okay? So we've learned from the field of neuroscience that the key to wiring your brain is repetition. So that's key, repetition, repetition, repetition. And the messages that you get that are repeated the most wire your brain the most. The problem is your brain doesn't know right from wrong. It doesn't know good from bad or positive from negative. It's kind of like a computer, right? It simply goes to work to make whatever you tell it the most truth, all right? So that, is real, that was really revolutionary to me um, when I really grabbed a hold of this. I was like, okay, so I feel like sometimes we feel like we just have to think everything that comes in our brain, but really... <laughs> You don't, <laughs> but you know, your brain is just like a computer. It doesn't know good from bad, right from wrong, positive from negative. It simply goes to work 
to make whatever you tell it the most, it goes to work to make that truth. So your brain is either wired for success or wired for failure. So success really is neurological. It's um, this beautiful wor word called neuroplasticity is kind of what we're going to talk about tonight. So neuroplasticity, the definition is the scientific discovery that your brain continues to rewire itself throughout your entire life. So it's actually programmed or wired to succeed or wired to fail or somewhere in between. So in Dr. Shad's years of research, um, he found that if you grew up in a reasonably positive home, you during your first 18 years of life, you were told no, what you could not do or what would not work more than 148,000 times. Yeah, so when I first heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to be the yes mom, <laughs> right? But, but really, I mean, that's kind of shocking. If you grew up in a reasonably positive home during your first 18 years of life, you were told no, what you could not do or what would not work more than 148,000 times. So it doesn't always necessarily have to be words. I mean, think about that. You know, you get the look at the dinner table, you get the pinch in church when you're wiggling around, whatever. I mean, sometimes it's nonverbal, sometimes it's verbal, but the reality is it happens all the time, right? Um, and sometimes that's necessary. I mean, safety, of course, but a lot of times I catch myself, you know, can I, can I paint? No. I mean, really, it's just because I don't want to clean up the mess. I mean, is that really fair? <laughs> but I mean, just think about that for a minute. Um, so researchers have also told us that as much as 77% of all the programs that you and I have today are either false, harmful, or they work against us. More than 77%, as much as 77%. So I kind of, I want to talk about fear for a minute because I feel like that's something that holds most of us back from... I don't know, almost anything good in our life, really, you know, fear is, it's there in our business, it's there in relationships, it's there. So fear, before we talk about that for a minute, I want you to understand that there's only two fears that you were actually born with, okay? The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. Those are the only things you were born with. Everything else is learned. So why is it so easy to think negative over positive or to be afraid or to have a, yeah, oh, I don't want to call this person. They might think this and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, first of all, nobody's thinking about you. <laughs> They're all thinking about themselves. So just take that out of your head. All right. In fact, that becomes kind of self-focused. Oh, they are probably going to think this and this and this about me, 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 me. So take that out of your head. Um, but really, why is it so easy? So there's this little thing in your brain called the amygdala, this little guy. And the amygdala is basically our brain's built-in alarm system. So it's always on alert. It's uh, responsible for our fight or flight response, okay? So it causes fear, it causes negative reactions. And honestly, back in cave days, that was really helpful because, you know, you're outside and you hear rustling in the bushes. Uh, your amygdala is on alert, and that's probably good because it could be a saber-toothed tiger, right? But in this day and age, I don't think anybody has any saber-toothed tigers in their backyards. And most people that come to your door are people that you know, your friendly neighbors, whatever. You know, we live in a fairly safe place. So that amygdala is just hanging out waiting to do its job. So there's a couple of ways scientifically that we've found to help calm your amygdala. Um, and in fact, I talk about this with my five-year-old. Um, she knows what the amygdala is. And if she starts getting worked up about something, we talk about it. I'm like, okay, what's happening right now? Your amygdala is on alert. <laughs> How are we going to calm it down? <laughs> okay. Um, and so there's a couple of ways that we found scientifically that help to calm your amygdala. Number one is meditation. Um, sometimes in the faith community, people get weirded out by that, but it's not weird. It's basically just focusing and thinking and dwelling on something that's, you know, calming and truth. All right. So meditation is one. Um, practices like yoga, again, helping you to focus and calm yourself. And then the third way is self-talk. Um, 
the right kind of self-talk, which brings mindfulness, focus, calm. It, it's basically reprogramming you to be calm and mindful. So that's kind of an interesting thing. I always like to bring that up because I feel like um, in our life, and particularly in our Arbon business, most things that hold us back are because we're fearful of something, right? So just remember, if you're feeling afraid of the phone or afraid of what someone's going to think or whatever, just calm your amygdala right on down. <laughs> Not necessary. No saber-toothed tigers jumping through the phone, people. Okay. Okay, so let's talk for just a minute. Um, I want to talk to you guys about how this works, all right? So self-talk. I want to show you how this works, how we get progr programmed, and I want to give you a picture that you can keep with you. It's funny because the very first time that I heard Dr. Shab present, 11 something years ago, he painted this picture and I never, ever forgot it. And so, so it's a picture that you can keep with yourself and it's called Self Talk Park, all right? And so it works like this. So let's say you're a brand new baby, an infant, you've just been born and you magically find yourself standing in Self Talk Park, okay? And Self Talk Park is beautiful. It's, you know, there's no roads, no pathways at all in Self Talk Park. It's basically a blank slate. Um, it's just a park filled with endless green grass, beautiful trees, blue sky, white puffy clouds. It's basically, you know, the perfect place to be, okay? Now, let's say you get your first message. And it could be any message, right? And you take a few short steps through Self Talk Park. And you stop, you look back, and you can't even see where you've walked because you've only gotten that message one time, right? So let's say you get that same message again, and again, and again, and a few more times, and you turn around and you look back and you haven't formed a pathway yet, but you can start to see where you've been walking. And then you get that same message and it gets repeated frequently again and again. And each time in the brain, each time a message is repeated, the brain is actually creating a pathway an actual physical, chemical, neural pathway. And it gets stronger and stronger each time the message is repeated. All right, so the law of repetition. Remember we talked about that. Repetition, repetition, repetition. So I wanna give you a couple of, of practical examples of how that could work. One that you may have heard before or may have even used before is um, I can never remember names. All right, so how many of you guys have heard that? maybe used it. I can never remember names. So think about that for a minute. Every time you say that, your brain doesn't know if that's true or not. It simply goes to work to make that truth, right? So I can never remember names. Ah, I'm so terrible at remembering names. You're, you're saying that. And pretty soon your brain is, every time it hears somebody's, you meet somebody new, it automatically goes to work. Oh, well, she doesn't remember names. She's not really good at remembering. Why even bother? And there you go you pretty soon you find yourself, it really is a struggle to remember names, right? So your brain basically just did what you told it to do. <laughs> um, another one, um, another example would be like six-year-old Susie. She hears, uh, you're gonna grow up and be chubby just like your Aunt Jo. Well, with enough repetition, Susie forms a pathway in her brain that makes it become true. So when Susie gets that same message or other similar messages repeated about her weight or her appearance, repeated often enough, Susie's own self-talk creates an overweight picture of herself that gets permanently wired into her brain. And now today, in her 30s, she's overweight. Um, the choices that she's making are supporting that. Um, she's starting to look a great deal like her Aunt Jo. You guys, they don't even have to be related. But by now, Susie's wired to be overweight. So in our own lives, we end up, we end up becoming our number one programmer. And in, mo in time, most of our pathways in self-talk part come from us. And unfortunately, many of those messages that we give ourselves are exactly the wrong messages. So... So let's take a walk back to Self Talk Park for a minute. You know, now imagine that this this closet door behind me. <laughs> imagine this is a map. This is um, this entire thing is a, a map of your Self Talk Park, right? 
It's filled, the beautiful Soft Talk Park is filled with paths, walkways, roads, highways, super highways. You know, we all have a map like that. Thousands of neural pathways in our brains that we follow. And it may be easy to see that many of them are exactly the wrong pathways. But our brain follows them kind of like on autopilot. You know, think about it. If you work in an office, I bet that you could get up in the morning, get in the car, drive all the way to work, and not even remember going there. I mean, you don't even have to think about it. It's like autopilot, right? You just go there. Um, same thing, probably like when you get in the shower, you probably do exactly the same routine every time you get in the shower. You don't even think about it anymore. It's just, it's a super highway, right? Some of super highways are good. I mean, showering's good. But, but you know, some of those could be not true, right? Or not, not serving you, um, you know, you're going to grow up and be overweight just like your Aunt Joe, or I never remember names. Those are not serving you. So in your brain, every message that you get from your own self-talk creates those pathways, and they're very real. So even right now, this very moment, we are literally wiring ourselves to either succeed or to fail. So it's happening all the time. So what about the person you were before you got wired? All right, so the truth is you were born to succeed. It's actually in your DNA. I believe that because I really believe that God doesn't create anything to fail. Um, imagine a snowflake. I mean, if he could take that much time and energy to create, every single snowflake is different and amazing and beautiful and gorgeous, and they last for like a minute. <laughs> um, if you could take that much time on a snowflake, think about Imagine what he could do with his greatest creation. I mean, you, right? So we were born to succeed. We were designed to be successful. So why aren't we all as successful as we were born to be? So imagine you're standing in a hospital newborn nursery, right? We've all, we've been there before. And you see all these little babies. You're standing there at the window of the nursery and you see all those little precious babies are all swelled up, all tight in their blankets. And if they're awake, you know, their eyes are open and they're just searching and they're looking and they're searching, just waiting to live out their incredible promise and potential, right? Um, nobody ever looked at a newborn baby and said, well, this one over here, amazing, wonderful things, but this one, loser, <laughs> you know, not so much. Nobody does that, right? So the promise and potential that you were born with never ever goes away. It just can get covered up with bad self-talk and programs, but underneath it's still there. So in the years that have gone by since you were an infant, the programs that you, you have right now have taken you to where you are today. So imagine for just a minute, visualize the most successful person that you can think of. Um, they could, you know, living or not, either way but the most successful in every way, not just financially, but in relationships and everything, okay? Somebody that you like spending time with, somebody you wanna learn from, you'd like to emulate, they're spiraling up in their life, they're winning in life, they're going for it, they're confident. If you asked that person to come and stand on stage in front of a group of people, they would probably have no problem with that. You know, they'd probably come and stand and smile, make eye contact, would be no problem. Now, on the opposite side, I want you to imagine the least successful person that you can think of failing in life. You know, they might have left home when they're 16 or 17. Um, if they're still alive, they might be unrecognizable, on drugs, they're spiraling down in their life. The least successful person that you know. And if you ask that person to come and stand on the other side of the stage, it would be really hard. You know, they would not want to be there. Um, probably would not even make eye contact. It would be really difficult for that person. So here we are. We have one person that's so successful in every way, and we want to be more like them, and then one of the least successful individuals that we could think of. Why is one successful and the other one failing? And the simple answer is their self-talk, their programs, okay? So imagine if you were listening to the successful person over here talking. You would probably hear words like, you know, belief, faith, goals, achievement, opportunities, possibilities. Yes, I will. Can I help you? Yes, I can. You would hear that kind of self-talk all the time because literally that is this person's program. That's who they are, right? And on the opposite side over here, you would probably never hear things like belief, faith, 
goals, opportunities. Can I help you? Yes, I can. You know, all of that was there, but it got covered with bad self-talk and bad wiring. And this person was born to succeed just like everyone else. And then they got wired to fail. And, you know, nobody tries to do that. I, I don't believe that anybody tries to do that, of course. But, um, you know, nobody gets married, has kids and says, hey, I've got an idea. Let's get married, have kids and totally screw up their heads. I mean, people don't do that. <laughs> Our parents, though, you know, they were just doing the best that they knew how. And they were programmed by somebody who got programmed by somebody who got programmed by somebody who got programmed. And so goes the story. But, you know, those two people, what's incredible about those two people is they could have been lying side by side in that newborn nursery, born in the same hospital, the same city, the same day, and maybe even the same hour. But of course, you know, most of us want to be over here on the successful side. <laughs> So how do we do that? Practically speaking, how do we do that? I want to give you guys some practical things that you can take away. So again, that beautiful word neuroplasticity is, you know, that idea that the brain is designed to change throughout your entire lifetime. So in school, back in the day, we were taught that your brain stops growing new neurons, it stops changing at a very young age, you know, you take your IQ test and that's it. You're either smart or you're not. But um, we've learned now um, through science, through brain scanning, through MRIs, that kind of stuff, we've learned that your brain is actually designed to change throughout your entire lifetime until your very last breath. In fact, right now, <laughs> your brain is rewiring itself. I'm, I'm programming you right now. <laughs> but I mean, that's incredible. I mean, I think it's amazing. It really, I don't know, it fires me up. I'm like, this is so exciting because, you know, you can take where you are right now and become discouraged and disheartened, or you can take this and realize that this is absolutely empowering. I mean, at any given moment that you make the decision to change your self talk, to change the trajectory of your life, you can. I mean, scientifically, you can. That is so awesome. I think it's so encouraging. It's so uplifting. It's so empowering. So anyway, okay, so the big question is, how do we do that? How do we rewire our brain in the right way? How do we change your programs? How do you change your self-talk? So in Dr. Shad's years of study, he's narrowed it down to three steps, okay? So these three steps are ways that we can literally change our life. So number one is to monitor. So mindfulness, monitor everything that you think, everything that you say. I mean, think about it for a minute. If you could hire somebody to follow you around for 48 hours and write down everything that you say to yourself, um, honestly, you'd probably be horrified. I mean, you would never probably talk to anybody else the way that you talk to yourself. And frankly, I feel like that's unacceptable. I mean, you need to be your number one cheerleader. I mean, you're, you're the most incredible thing, right? So, I mean, that's something to kind of think about. So number one is monitoring mindfulness. So I talk to my girls. I have two girls. They're 12 and 5. And I talk to them a lot about guarding your gates. And so what that basically means is, you know, if you recognize something that's coming, you're hearing or seeing something that's not serving you, that's not building you up, you have power to walk away, to look away, to close your eyes, guard your gates. You guys, there's a lot of people that talk to me every day, but there's only a few people that I allow to speak into my life and over my life. So really, you have to be very careful and protect I mean, protect your environment, protect yourself. So anyway, so number one is to monitor. Step number two is to edit, okay? So stop before you even think or say or see, you know, something. I always like to kind of think in word pictures. So I like to think about thoughts as butterflies. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can see those butterflies coming. Thoughts happen. I mean, they happen all the time, whatever. But you, if you see a thought, coming, you see that little butterfly coming and it does not serve you. You recognize that it's not truth. It's not serving you. It's not building you up. It's not speaking life to you. It's not giving you life. Um, if you see that, 
you, you don't have to let it come land, hang out and have a good time. You can shoo it right away. Okay. So stop, but editing it by itself won't rewire your brain with new programs that takes repetition. Remember repetition, repetition, repetition. So number three, step number three is listen to self-talk, the right kind of self-talk. You guys, this is not a new idea. I mean, back in the day, Paul wrote, wrote about it in the Bible in Romans, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is not a new concept. Um, it's just now we have scientific proof that this is actually real. <laughs> so I think it's awesome. I mean, in my mind, it, it kind of validated my faith. I'm like, wow, that's not just a great Bible verse. That's actually science. Like, that's incredible. So the most effective way that we have found to change your programs and literally rewire your brain is by listening to the right kind of self-talk. Repetition, repetition, repetition. <laughs> and so... Um, you know, how and when do you listen to that? You know, where do you get that? How do you listen to it? When do you listen to it? What does that look like? So practically speaking, um, you know, I, well, number one, ideally would be the best is to hear your own voice giving yourself talk, but 98% of the population won't do that. <laughs> sadly, um, we don't, I don't know. We won't take the time. We feel embarrassed for whatever reason. We won't do it. So in lieu of that, Dr. Shad recognized that. He said years ago, he used to do these huge long seminars on how to make your own self-talk and then people just wouldn't do it. So he has recorded for over 30 years now, he has pre-recorded self-talk albums. And we've had these for 11 years. We use them regularly now in our home. But there's all different ones. There's ones for little kids, ones for older kids, one for tween girls, um, for personal professional success. There's a specific one for Arbonne, Lifetime Library, Weight Loss. I mean, there's a whole library full of them. Um, but he's had those. And so I, I always recommend them because I know they work. We use them in our own home. In fact, we a great example, um, we listen to the little kids one every morning while we're getting ready for school. My, my five-year-old goes to pre-K and um, while we're having breakfast, we always turn on Shadrach the bear. It's a little cheesy, but you guys, it's powerful. So one of the things on um, Shadrach the bear that it says is it's okay to make mistakes. You know, mistakes are one way that we learn. And it kind of talks about that. And you would be, I'm shocked when I watch my five-year-old versus my 12-year-old, you know, if the 12-year-old screws something up, it's like devastation, right? But the five-year-old, if she messes something up, she'll look at me and she'll say, well, Shadrach says, it's okay to make mistakes. I'll try again. I'm like, it's powerful at five. She's learning this, right? I mean, think of how powerful that is to take into your life. Um, another great example is um, on Shadrach the Bear, it talks about uh, when someone asks, how are you? I smile really big and I say, I'm incredible. And we were in the grocery store not long ago in the checkout line and she's sitting in the car and the guy says, hey, how are you? And she looks at him. She smiles really big <laughs> and she said, I'm incredible. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm wiring my kids. <laughs> it's working. But you guys, but really, I mean, it's really powerful. Even your little kids can catch on to this. And it's, I mean, if they can get it at five, I mean, think about how much farther along they're going to be when they get to 40. I mean, I turned just from 40. I'm like, gosh, so much farther along. It's just, it's really, really powerful to give that to them, even at this age. But again, you know, don't, you know, take heart because at any moment at 40, at 50, at 60, at 70, you can, you can start anytime. You can start anytime. You wouldn't believe how incredible your brain is. It can start changing immediately. So, so anyway, okay. So that's just a practical example, but, um, uh, what was it? Okay. So back to like when and how to listen. So the best times to listen to self-talk is 30 minutes after you wake up and 30 minutes before you go to bed. Um, that's when your brain is most, you know, susceptible to taking that in. Um, you don't have to sit and watch and focus and everything. It's 10, most of them are about 10 minutes and it's recorded and I just turn it on in the background and it's, we're kind of listening to it, kind of not, but it's there 
and your brain, your brain hears it. So don't worry about that. Um, and then another great time is anytime you're doing something that's already a habit. So if you're driving to and from work every day, that's a great time to listen because it's, you know, something that's a habit. So your brain can wire in quickly if you're doing something that's already a habit. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so I always recommend a great starting point if you want to start with pre-recorded self-talk. And I love Dr. Shad's. So I'll, I'll speak from that because that's what I know, but is he has a library called the Lifetime Library, and you can get it a couple different ways. I'll tell you how you can get it, but there's eight different programs in the Lifetime Library, and he has a suggested listening schedule. I can give it to you guys if you want it, um, but you know, sometimes when people get this, they're like, well, I'm going to listen all day, every day to everything. And I would not recommend that. <laughs> Your brain will probably like be exploding and totally fried after a day. So got to give yourself, you know, in doses and repetition. So for instance, like the very first week, he recommends every day in the first week, listening to the program, taking control of your life. And you listen to that in the morning and in the evening. And if you're doing a habit during the day and you listen to the same one every day for a full week. And then the second week you'll move on to self-esteem. And then the next week, you'll move on to like personal development. And so it goes through a system. And, you know, if you feel like you need more time on self-esteem, then by all means, spend more time on self-esteem. But um, he does have a suggested listening schedule. So I can give that to you guys if you want. But I love it. I mean, a couple other things that we use also is there's an app that if you have an iPhone, um, it's a free app. You can also pay for it and get more stuff. But um, there's a free version and it's called, um, it's, what is it called? Think Up? It's called, I got to look on my phone. It's called Think Up, making sure I'm right. But you can actually record, yeah, it's called Think Up. It's orange and it has like a little sprout thing that comes out of it. But that's one that you can record your own voice. They have some recommended ones, but my five-year-old recorded her own. And let me tell you, we listen to it every day when we drive to preschool. And she came up with the stuff. I did not. But a lot of them mirror Shadrach the Bear. Um, on that, the stuff that she came up to say, it was like, I make good choices. Guess who said that? Shadrach the Bear, right? You know, we learned that from Shadrach. So she made up this whole thing. And so she has a little um, cycle that she listens to her own voice. And that's even, I think that's even more powerful. I mean, she's hearing her own self tell herself you know, I make good choices and um, every day in every way I'm getting better and better. These are the things that she said. So I think that's really powerful. That's another one that we can use. Um, scripture, affirmations, um, vision statements, all of these things work really well. So um, I'll just tell you guys as we wrap up tonight. Oh gosh, I'm talking long. <laughs> 940. Okay. I'll wrap up tonight with my own story and just kind of how I put this into practical use for my own life and my own business. Um, I've kind of given you some examples with my family, but with my business specifically, because I think a lot of us on here are with Arbonne, most of us probably, but um, specifically in your Arbonne business, this is how I put this into practice. Um, you know, about nine months in, when I made the decision to run with this, I went district like right away. Um, and then about nine months in, I was still a district. <laughs> I was like... I'm a team of one, me, myself, and I. And what is going on? I mean, honestly, I had been around Arbon so long, I figured I'd be a VP in six months, but that did not happen. Um, and so nine months in, I was still a district manager. I had no business builders. I was working. I mean, I had a full calendar. I was bonusing my district every month by myself. So I was working. I mean, I was not, you know, screwing around. I was, I was, I was doing the do. But I was frustrated and I was, I was honestly feeling pretty down. And I had just moved across the country to a city where I had one friend. Um, and to this day, that friend will not host an Arbonne party for me to this day. So I literally had nobody. I mean, I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any business partners. I, uh, nothing. And I was feeling pretty low. And that's a little, I mean, that's pretty unusual for me. Uh, my personality does not lean towards that, but I was kind of lonely. I was depressed. I was frustrated for sure. Um, 
but I knew like in my heart of hearts, I knew that I was supposed to be doing this business. And I was like, what the heck is going on? What do I need to do here? What? Something has to shift. And so I really felt in my heart of hearts that I needed to write out a vision statement. And so I wrote out a page in my journal. I wrote out a vision statement, just kind of what I believed in my heart that God had for my business, just my own personal stuff. <clears throat> and almost out of spite, if I'm going to be honest, I was like, well, Dr. Shad says that your brain is like a computer, whatever you tell it the most, it goes to work to make that truth. So I'm going to see if that actually works for me. And so I made a commitment to read my vision statement every single night before I went to bed. And I did not feel those things. I'm going to put that out there right now. My emotions, my feelings did not line up with what I had written on the paper, but I knew that what I had written on the paper was truth. Um, but it was really hard for me to read it because I, I didn't feel it. Um, but I, I made that commitment. So I read it every single night. So I wrote that on September 3rd of 2013. And so I started reading it every, every night. And, you know, a week or so later, a week and a half later, I got my paycheck for the month before. <laughs> and you guys, nine months in, my paycheck was $207.82. It was the first month that I didn't hit district bonus because we had just moved, so I didn't have enough sponsor, didn't sponsor enough people. And I was like, what the heck? I mean, honestly, nine months of working and a $207 paycheck. I mean, that would have been really, honestly, that would have been the perfect time for me to quit. If, if I'm going to be honest, that would have been exactly the right time for me to just throw in the towel. But instead I was like, okay, no, I know I'm supposed to be here. I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And so I continued to read that vision statement and every day I would read Ion Arbon stories. I would look trainings up on YouTube and just watch them so that I would feel like, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. <laughs> if they can do it, I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. I would listen to self-talk. I continued reading. I read a book every single month. I still do that. Read a book every single month just to grow. Um, and then I was really careful about guarding my gates, like who is speaking life to me. Um, and if they weren't speaking life, I would, you know, make sure that I spent minimal time there because I needed life at that point. And you know, Jim Rohn talks about that. You know, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. So I really feel like that's important. <laughs> but, you know, I made that commitment to read that vision statement every single night. And I'll tell you, two months to the day, November 3rd of 2013, I got wind of a car pre presentation that was happening two hours for me. I didn't know anybody there. Um, but I made the drive two hours and I got a friend to meet me. Um, and I had kind of been talking to her about Arbonne and she told me later, she's like, I really honestly just went. So you'd stop bugging me. <laughs> I was like, what? Jeez, come on. But, um, I saw her last week and she was like, I can't even tell you how grateful I am that I said, yes. I mean, so many good things have come to me because I said yes to that. And I was like, oh. but she drove an hour. I drove two hours. We met two months to the day that I started reading that vision statement. She became my first district manager. And so in December of that year, she came on in November. In December, we went into area qual. In January, we finished area. And um, just to kind of give you an idea of numbers, you guys, I mean, I was like 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, like months, 11 months of 5,000. And December hit, and we hit 20,000. And January hit, and we hit 25,000, and we never went below that. So I'm just telling you this because I want you to know, like, I'm just a regular person that chose to get control of my head game, right? And how powerful that is. And so that year, 2014, um, that year I was an area manager. And by the end of the year, December, I promoted to region. And for any of you that went to GTC the following year, that was the year that I earned um, the Parade of Champions Award. And so if anybody doesn't know what that is, because I didn't, I, I didn't even know what it was till I got home. That's true. <laughs> I was like, what did I earn? I don't even know what I won. But, um, but what that is, that award in Arbonne, it's the, well, they take the top 20 consultants in the entire company 
it was of every single consultant in Arbon from every country, the top 20 that personally helped the most people promote to district manager. So I think it's cool. They, they make a big deal about this award because, you know, personally helping people become successful, that's just awesome. I mean, it's cool that Arbon celebrates that. But anyway, it's the top 20 consultants that personally helped the most people promote to district during that calendar year, 2014. And um, they don't tell you what number you are. They just call you out on stage and count you down. And they're counting down, they're counting down. And anyways, I ended up being number one, which is wah, crazy. But, um, but you know, it's funny because that moment, everybody looks at that moment. They're like, oh, it's amazing. It's glamorous. Wow, what did you do? What's your tip? I'm like, gosh, you know what? Honestly, that moment was called a culmination of a whole lot of just doing the do and minding my mind. And it wasn't glamorous. It really wasn't. It was, you know, telling one more person, doing one more party, offering this to one more person and going home and watching one more YouTube training. So I felt like, yes, I could go do it tomorrow. And it was that. I mean, it's a whole, if you've ever read The Slight Edge, it was that. It was a whole lot of little decisions that I made. You know, success really is just a culmination of all of that. You know, the moment in itself is amazing, but the moment is made up a whole lot of little bitty steps to take you there. So anyways, I want to wrap up tonight and I I'd, I'd like to share that because I want you guys to know that, that if I can do this, I know that you can do it too. I absolutely know it. If you choose to plug in, mind your mind and do the do. I mean, it's really not complicated. It's those things. And honestly, most of it, I would say like 99.9% .9 is the head game. And if you can get your head game under control, then you're golden, right? I mean, that your, your head trash talks you in or talks you out of so much stuff that could be so incredible for your life. So anyway, okay. So I want to wrap up tonight and just tell you guys, you know, I hope this is empowering for you because honestly, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. You know, whatever happened in the past happened, you know, it is what it is. But what matters is what this moment, what you decide in this moment and where you take that, because that's really what's going to determine the rest of your life. And so, you know, don't forget that, you know, at any given moment, you have the power to change the trajectory of your life. You really, really do. And it's not just about a good idea or a good Bible verse. It's, it's science. You know, God created us that way. Your brain actually works that way. So I want to wrap up with a quote, you guys, because I really believe that um, you're worth it and you're worthy. And there's people out there that are waiting to hear this message and, um, and waiting for you to share it with them. So so I'll wrap up with this quote. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And it's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. And then we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God, and your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not just in some of us, it's in every one. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So with that, I will wrap up. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm like wiping away my tears. Thank you so much. You know, I think, you know, it's a lot of people need to hear what you have to say. So, ah. <laughs> You're so welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's honestly my, my thrill and my joy to share this with you guys. It really is. Well, and this is Joy. I'm just going to hop in real quick. Hi. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> and um, I, I can't tell you how timely this is. Um, I, it, it, it's just total confirmation. It's um, for many different reasons. And uh, those who are closest to me know why. And, um, you know, this stuff is so real. And I, I 
put my stamp on this whole concept um, as well. I had the pleasure of meeting Shad Helmstetter, gosh, probably eight, nine, ten years ago when he came to Maryland and did this self-talk seminar. And it absolutely changed my life. And um, so I'm so, so grateful to you, Bethany, for spending time with us tonight and our teams and, and just pouring into us because um, I know this is going to make a big difference in not just our businesses, but our lives all around. So thank you so much. Mwah. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I forgot to say, if you guys want, um, I have a link for like a 30-day trial for Dr. Shad stuff. So I can send it to you guys if you guys, if anybody wants that, you're welcome to use that. Yeah, can you put that in the, in the event for us? Yeah, yeah, I sure will, yes. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, you're so welcome. Yes, my pleasure. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop recording. <laughs>